Yeah, Billy Nitro, your internet knife and gun guru. Here we are, guys, back with another episode. <laughs> my last score of 2020, possibly, or I guess you could say maybe my first score of 2021. Yeah, hope you guys are having a, having a happy New Year's Eve. This is a little something I scored today. You guys are going to like it, I do believe. Oh, yeah. Smith & Wesson. Chief Special Pre-Model 36, so, or Pre-Model, whatever you want to call it. Kind of like me old uh, Smith & Wesson uh, Model 36 Chief Special there. We can see that right there. It says Model 36. This right here, I believe you guys are going to like it. So we'll put this over here for right now. Get the fingerprints off of it. So we'll stick that right there. So guys, we're going. I've, I've just polished it up a little bit. Got home with it today. Haven't really messed with it. I just wiped it off real quick. We're going to check it out together. A few differences between this one and this one. This is vintage 1956. <laughs> it's a pre-model. So here we go, guys. <laughs> it's a beauty, guys. Gorgeous. Harvey's Pistol Pond here in Knoxville. Tennessee, original box, <laughs> look at that, you don't find many of these, and much less with a, with a <laughs> original box, very cool, so here we are guys, check that out, <laughs> diamond grips, you know I love those diamonds, she has a little bit of wear on her from what I've seen. Not much, um, but she's a beauty. She's sh great shooter condition. I believe it's been carried a little bit. There's the rest of the box there. You can see there's 1955. That's not the date of the pistol. That's, that's in all the boxes. That's not the, a lot of people get that date confused with the gun that's in a box. This is in all of the blue boxes like this. That date right there, so. There's your statement of liability and warranty. So, anyways, let's get this out of the way. Here we are, guys. Look at that. Is that not a... Man, if she could talk. <laughs> Looks like it's been carried a little bit, from what I've noticed there. It's, could be worse. Got a little dent right there. Don't know what happened there. Check that that hammer spur out. That's a little different than what we know as of today with the the vintage ones. This was these uh, the the model the chief special I should say uh, was introduced in 1950 at the International Association of Chiefs of Police, and uh, they voted and dubbed this the chief special. And we kind of I kind of call it the chief's special, but you know. Either one will work. Um, so this is a pre-model. This does not have a Model 36 number on it where they normally have the model number. There's nothing there. So this is a pre-model. This is vintage 1956. And I've checked the serial number on it. And, um, I mean, it, it just, there's things about it that tell us that it's, it's a pre-model. Um, but the serial number is how you really know that it's a when it was manufactured. Give you a roundabout area. Uh, 1957 was when they went to the model number here, and this is a 1975. But 1957, that's when Smith and Wesson went to the model number and started putting not model numbers on their revolvers. You see there, you can see it says model 36 there. That this one does not have that as you saw. So, what a beauty. I mean, you can tell a little bit of a difference there with that hammer hammer spur, too. It's a little different there. That's much more meaty. That'll grab you right there. This is a little finer. Still feels good, but it's just a little different. The angle's a little different on it there. There's a little more there on this one. Now, the, the, the flat latch there. I put the flat latch on this one. The original latch, this is my Model 37 here, airweight. 
this is what should be on here. I still have it on there, but you know, I love that flat latch look. So I put it on this one, but now that I have this one, I'm just going to switch this one back to one of these. I still have it. That's the one that should be on this 1975 one right here. This is a 71 three inch, uh, model 37 chief special Bob hammer there. Beauty, a little beauty, a little beauty there. Love it. But I really love these snubbies. But yeah, this, what a beauty, guys. Just picked her up. I just wiped her off. Haven't looked at it much. Paid a little more than I wanted to, but man, these, these just don't pop up like they used to. And if they do, they're outrageous. <laughs> it still has, look, it still has red paint, some red paint on it there. So it looks like somebody's fired it a little bit, but you can tell by that cylinder mark there. It's not been fired much. It's been carried a little. It's probably been a police officer's gun for all we know. I was told this was, this was a police officer's uh, backup gun here or sheriff's deputies back up there. That's what it spent 80% uh, of its life being. Um, but this one, who knows? It's, can you see it's got a little holster wear there, right there on the ends there. It's hard to find on these days that don't have a little wear right there on the edge of the barrel there. A little pencil barrel, tapered. Just a little beauty, the pin there. They stopped that in 80, 82. This one actually has a serial number on the on the cylinder there. A model 36 or the model 36 there doesn't have that. These are uh, manufacturing stamps there as they're building them. Hand fit. I consider these. Many of you guys probably already heard me say I consider these modern day works of art. I mean, they're just all hand fit. Smith & Wesson does not make them like this anymore. There's a lot of MIM parts in them, which are mold-injected parts. These are all um, just forged parts, hand-fit together. It's like a clock. Look at that beautiful uh, case-hardened hammer there and trigger. You just They just don't make them like this. You got your uh, hammer-mounted firing pin there. They don't do that anymore. Just a beauty. I mean, you can see it's, it, it, there's very little letting in, in here. It's not been fired much. It's been fired some, but not much. Probably just test fired. Look down the barrel, it has no wear down the inside of the bore there. Little bit of letting right there on the inside of the forcing cone, but that's to be expected if you fire one lead round nose bullet out of here it's going to have a little bit of leading right there that's that's normal so that tells me it's at least been fired a few times but that cylinder scratch tells us it's not been fired much as you can see this one's been fired a great deal more there you can almost feel that one with your fingernail you can't feel this one with your fingernail what do you guys think of my my last score of 2020 another one for the collection I've got to get you guys a my Smith and West, vintage Smith and Wesson uh, collection video. A lot of guys have been asking. Uh, the channel is booming right now, guys. I've got a video that's going up above a million views. I've got comments coming in. I can't control them. I'm getting emails, so I, I try to get back to you guys. We are doing good. Here's another one I scored a few weeks ago. <laughs> Model Ten. <laughs> this little beauty. Great shooter condition, 1961. Look at that big old snubby Model 10 there. Man, it's a beauty. I can't wait to get these out and shoot them. You guys are gonna be there too. That 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 Model 10 is another video. <laughs> I just wanted to let you guys check my first slash or my last slash first score. Start the new year off with a bang. Man, I had to wait in the pawn shop. Uh, well, it says pawn shop slash gun shop, mostly a gun shop. And it was packed in there. I waited over about an hour, hour and a half for my 4473 to come back. Um, I guess everybody in Tennessee was buying guns today. They definitely were at Harvey's because <laughs> it was packed. But man, it was worth it. So what do you guys think about it there? 
free model 38 chief special now guys these these revolvers uh they were shipped over uh some of these revolvers seen were seen in uh seen uh use in vietnam uh families would ship these over in uh, uh soup cans and stuff to so their um gis over there maybe they were pilots or whatever a lot of pilots got uh revolvers shipped over to them from family back in those days and the, the, these are just classic there this is probably one of the most <laughs> uh prolific revolvers there is this little snubby i mean this was meant this was made to be carried a lot of history i mean you go from the mob <laughs> not you know the mob uh, police uh police carrying his backup and uh, just your average citizen out there and they're just they're just great great revolvers classics and i love them i love collecting them the value is going up in them by the day so i had to i had to snag this one you can see it's i need to do a little polishing up there and if you notice there's a little difference here on this one see that brass there polish them up and then you can take some real light uh like 600 grit sandpaper be very careful and you can sand that down and you'll get a brass finish there and you can kind of two-tone your uh, your grips there your this is the target grips right here you can put on a square actually they'll go on a square or a round butt i've had these on the on the model 37 there round butt these are target grips much bigger they used to run about a hundred and something bucks on ebay right now if you can find them got some great character to them Anyways, guys, wanted to give you guys a first look at that. We're, we'll do a full review on this, but no, I just wanted to show this to you. I'm, I'm proud of this one right here. Let me get my wipe that off there. Get those fingerprints off there. It, this thing just it shined up great. It had fingerprints and gunk all over it, some oil or whatever. I don't know. It just it has shined up great. And this is not the best lighting to be showing it to you in. Man, she's she's a little sweetie. I gotta get that red paint off there. Just uh, this tight. I'm gonna show you guys real quick how you test a revolver when you when you pick one up, and you're checking one out. Pull that hammer back. Make sure it will not push forward. If that hammer falls, someone's been messing around with the with the hammer shears trying to do a trigger job on it. If that hammer falls and you push on it, but anyways, a little test. And if you're checking one of these out in a gun shop. Pull that hammer back, put your thumb on there first. Make sure it's clear, or clear, you know, empty. Pull that hammer back, finger on the hammer, pull the trigger, test that tightness of that cylinder. You'll have just a little bit of wiggle, if any at all. It's okay to have a little bit. Fall, do it on every cylinder. Let it fall. Make sure that thing is tight, and this one is this one's just tight. Do that five times. There's a little looseness in that one, but that's okay. Nothing big. Just tight right there. Then you pull it down, make sure your crane is nice and tight. Another big, big area that I check is around that forcing cone. I bring a flashlight with me, and I check that forcing cone out real good in case somebody's been firing plus P ammo in these. Older ones, they're not rated for plus P. You could probably get away with it, but those forcing cones will crack. So check that out real nice around there, right around that, right around the breech right there at that forcing cone. Yeah, that's that's how I check them out there. And what else do I do? I make sure the, the front sight and the barrel is clocked right, straight. And make sure it's clocked straight. Uh, but the main two big ones is make sure that hammer will not push and push on that hammer and it fall. Make sure you got a nice trigger pull there, nice and smooth, which this one is butter smooth. Test that single action out. That is boom. What a beauty. Some people say, you know, go down the break the number one rule and 
make sure those cylinders line up with a, take a flashlight and make sure those cylinders line up, but you can pretty much tell from up top here. Do that if you want to, but don't like pointing guns at ourselves, so, you know. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Hope you guys have a great New Year's. Just two beauties here. Two of a kind. Two of a kind. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, we, you guys are going to see a full video on this one. We're going to have to get these to the range. And I got to do you guys a collection video, guys. So if you guys are not subscribed, subscribe up to the channel. You can't see all these awesome videos. If you're not subbed up to the channel, click that bell. And uh, I guess, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. We're going to ring in the new year here in a few. I mean, it's uh, nine, a little bit after nine now. I'll get this video up probably within the hour. So hope you guys have a great New Year's. Let me know if you guys scored one or scored you a new piece, a knife, or whatever. Catch you on the next one, guys. Hey, Billy. Over and out of here, guys. Peace. Happy New Year.